I want to praise God, you know, for the after a long time I met someone who is so cutting edge in the gift of prophecy. It was amazing to after many years meet someone who I found really cutting edge in the gift of prophecy. And uh, but you see, we all would love to be like her, but would we be consistent in doing simple things like her? Let me give you a small example. I find in our church, 50% of people come on a Sunday after half an hour. But this lady reached before half an hour. What does that show? She does simple, simple things so seriously, so consistently. And she told me, you know, brother, sorry, I'm half an hour early. I don't like to be late for the things of God. And sometimes I reach 15 minutes early. Sometimes that makes me half an hour early. But I so value being on time. And we are so casual, yeah, about timing. Really, it hurts me. Most, many of you come 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, half an hour late, 45 minutes late. Why? Why don't we take it seriously? Huh? Is it so difficult to be on time? And here's this lady, an old lady, takes the metro train from Delhi and is half an hour before sitting in my house. But we want to be like her. But we don't want to consistently pay the price like her mm. of wanting the presence of the Holy Spirit. We should show up before the Holy Spirit shows up. I was so touched. An old lady takes a metro train in a December cold, but we want to be like her. Yeah? If I ask you how many of you want to be like her, everyone says you want to be like her. How many will come half an hour early, 50 minutes early, 20 minutes early? Because you so value the Holy Spirit. You don't want to be late before God starts showing up in the place. We, we would love to be like Joyce Mayer and, and Bill Johnson and Catherine Kuhlman, but are we willing to have a lifestyle like them? Are willing to pay the price that they have paid, not just once in a while, consistently. The journey with God is the journey of doing consistently simple things well. We all want to one day explode in a big way for God. Hey, what about those daily simple things? What about those weekly simple things, consistently doing simple things in God? So I was, you know, so I just wanted to encourage you with, um, I was so happy to see so many of you got words of prophecy. It's such a delight for my heart. But the point is, now what are we going to do with it? Because it's a lie if you think that words of prophecy happen by us being passive. They don't happen by us being passive. We also have to work together with the Holy Spirit. You know, we would always love it if God does everything and we don't have to do anything. <laughs> and we have that kind of preaching also today. God has done everything, you don't have to do anything. No, that's a wrong preaching. God has done everything. Now let's learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can bring what's into our account, into our possession. We also have to do something. So what are you going to do with the word of prophecy that came to you? What are you going to do if... You know, I, I, I was, uh, someone came and told me, and I was happy to see that excitement. I received the gift of healing. Great! Now what are you going to do with it? The auntie prayed for some people that go deeper in, in the gift of prophecy. Okay. So just because she prayed, are you going to become very cutting edge in the gift of prophecy? i sorry, you're not going to be. You got to do something about it. If you have the gift of prophecy, but you are a person who doesn't learn to deal with offense in your heart. You don't learn to deal with resentment against people. You will never be cutting edge in the gift of prophecy. Because you see, your, your resentment, your offense, will keep interfering with the Holy Spirit. Trying to speak to you about people. And you will always bring in your bitterness. And start challenging the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So how are you going to be cutting edge? Just because someone prayed over you. An impartation. That impartation is important, but that's not everything. Now what are you going to do with that prayer on your life? So much more is the responsibility for the one with the gift of prophecy to walk with a clean heart. Otherwise, you are never going to be that cutting edge person for God in the gift of prophecy. What are we doing when God so lavishly came forth through this woman? And, and, and I, I heard a prayer for people. Thank you, God, for the gift of prophecy you've given them, not to them deep in the gift of prophecy. Great, but what are you doing about it? Are you going to keep walking the way you've always walked? Or are you going to say, Father, how amazing and kind of you, how amazing and kind of you to move the heart of this woman, to pray this impartation over me, and now teach me what is my job, what is where do I partner in, that I could be that person. I feel there's so much passivity 
in the body of Christ to the things of God. So I would I would say one of the most important things we need to learn is we have to grow in being cutting edge for God, even in spiritual gifts. We have to learn to not grieve the Holy Spirit. He's really the key, isn't he? He's the one. The Bible says the Holy Spirit gives gifts as he wills. Who gives the gifts? Holy Spirit. He gives the gifts as he wills. It's not always the most mature who get all the spiritual gifts. Many times it's the baby in Christ also who God will give the spiritual gifts. And that's his amazing sovereign way of working. The clay has no right to tell the potter, come on, I'm 20 years in God. Why? I didn't get the gift of prophecy. And why that someone with two years in the Lord got it? I've seen so many young believers getting the gift of healing. But the problem is, we see these people that God has given gifts, and we think they suddenly they become mature overnight, and we put them on a pedestal and we mess them up. Spiritual is operating through you; it's not a sign of maturity. It's a sign of the kindness and the grace of God in releasing it to you. But you walking, manifesting the fruit of the Holy Spirit—that is maturity at display. And even the ones who've been given the spiritual gifts have to learn to steward well the measure of the gift that is given. You think just be, you know the day I was given the gift of prophecy, I wasn't given the full measure of the gift I am capable of walking into. I have to also learn how to steward a gift that is given to me. Just because someone is called to be a teacher in the body of Christ, they don't become a cutting edge teacher just because they are called to be a teacher. Just because someone is called as a pastor doesn't become that pastor God wants him to be. Just because you're called as a prophet, you don't become the cutting edge prophet. We need to learn to work together with God. We need to work to learn together with the Holy Spirit. We need to become focused in taking pains. The day the day dawned upon me that I've been called as a pastor teacher, I really began to take pains with the scriptures. It doesn't happen otherwise. It's foolish not to think because I am called in this. I will sleep and be, pa be, be, pass be, be passive and become this person. No, you won't. You've got to be active. Let the Lord actively work with you. Work together your salvation with fear and trembling, we are told. But then we have people in the body of Christ who say, No, 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 God has done everything and God has done everything. Yes, He has done everything on that cross. Now, you do something. You learn to honor the Holy Spirit. You learn to yield to the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can take what has been put into your heavenly account the day you were born again and release it into your possession. Why is it that we don't have today guys like Spurgeon, we don't have guys like today, like John Bunyan, we don't have guys like Muller. It's not that the Lord is not releasing spiritual gifts. It's not that the Lord is not releasing the fivefold ministry as gifts. He is doing it still. But there's something wrong with the way the called, the gifted, are partnering with the Holy Spirit. That's, a, that's where the problem lies. The problem is never at the end of God. And I say this not to, um, not to condemn you. I say this to challenge you. Because I don't want you to miss out on the richness of what God has for you. How do we get cutting edge in what, in a spiritual gift God gives us? How do we steward well? A spiritual gift God gives us. How do we steward things that God puts upon us? There are people on whom uh, 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 God, goes, God gives a grace of giving. And, and, uh, and what do they do with that grace of giving? What do you do with that gift of prophecy you got? What do you do with the gift of healing you got? One of the first things I would say is this. Take the Holy Spirit more seriously than ever before. Because He's the one who gave... And he's the one now who can take you deeper and make you more cutting edge in that gift. It's in his hands. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts as he wills. He gives spiritual gifts as he wills. And I can say to you, you know, some of you might not like it, but the true mark of maturity of a person is not manifesting spiritual gifts, but the true mark of maturity of a person is manifesting the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And there are people who say, you know, character is not important. No, character is very important. Character is extremely important for God. You know what? The glory of what God wants to put on us, it cannot be sustained if the character is weak. You'll break down. From where does integrity and structure come? It comes from character. 
Only character, godly character can hold when you keep putting more stuff on it, when you keep putting more stuff on that person. Godly character is so important. Otherwise, we won't be able to hold. Not just the glory being put on you. The heat that comes because of glory. The more the glory you taste, the more the heat. How do you handle it? How do you navigate it? With cracks in character. With cracks in character, how do we navigate a greater measure of glory in our life? It will break you down. So please, don't talk about things like, oh, character is not so important. It's very important. Extremely important. There is nothing more important than Christ-like character. Because those are the things on which God builds. Those are the things in which God puts things. The weight of the things of God cannot hold when there are cracks in your character. So work on your character and learn to steward the spiritual gifts well. They go hand in hand. Work on your character development and steward, learn to grow in stewarding the spiritual gifts well. They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And I have realized a few things in my own journey about spiritual gifts, stewarding spiritual gifts. And the number one, the most important I found is, if you are serious about growing and be more cutting edge in a spiritual gift, learn to honor the Holy Spirit more and more and more and more. He's the one who gave it. He's the one who can take you deeper and make more cutting edge in it. This grieving the Holy Spirit is a serious business. And we can, be very, we can take it very lightly. I really like the example she said. She was, she was so amazingly transparent. She, and, and most of us are guilty of what she said. She said about, you know, none of, none of us, most of us don't make big lies as we grow in God, but then we start making small convenient lies, subtle lies, because we just don't explain to everybody all the time everything. And, and if you're honest, we can all be involved in those subtle misrepresentations. Yeah, And she said, many times, you know, someone calls you, you're busy, you saw it, but you didn't take it. And then they say, Are I called you three times, why you didn't take my call? And then, you know, either we can say, I was busy and I didn't want to take your call at that time. And then, oh boy, they're going to shout and scream at you. Or, can we, the most convenient thing is, my phone was charging in the other room, isn't it? That's the most convenient way to get away with anything. When you don't want to take anyone's calls, you don't want them to ask you crazy questions, the most convenient answer is, my phone was charging in the other room. I don't know about you, but when I met the Lord, you know, the Lord would speak to me about big stuff. Because there was so much big stuff that needed to be dealt with, you know. For me, coming from the Jat community, for me it was a big deal to not hit someone if someone hit me. <laughs> so for me, God had to deal with that big stuff. But as the years passed by, I found God coming and speaking to me about more hidden and painful stuff. I don't like the hard attitude here. Why are you doing this? The hard motive isn't right here, man. I didn't, that was more... <coughs> don't talk to me about all that stuff. That hits more. That hurts more. Attitude. I didn't like your attitude today. That hurts more. That hits more. That hits hard. Yeah? Initially, <laughs> we are so fleshly, God can't even speak to us about the hidden things. God can only come and say, Arre, don't give gali bhai. Arre, don't hit him. You know, those are the only thing the Holy Spirit can do with us. Don't shout and scream at people. And then we begin to grow. And we stop shouting and screaming. We stop using abusive language. And we stop hitting people. And then the Lord begins to speak to things that are even more painful for us to handle. I didn't, I didn't like your attitude in that meeting. I didn't like your heart motive. That's the wrong heart motive to do this, man. And that begins to hit hard, more so for us. And so if you look at 2 Corinthians 7, please. Wherever there's a therefore, we need to consider what came before. So what came before was that uh, God is giving a promise that if you will move out of the midst of the non-believers, do not touch in the unclean, I'll be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters of mine. Yeah. So can you, can you just go back and read this so that we know what, what the therefore is about before anything else? Okay. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, I'll, and I will welcome you. By the way, this is not Old Testament, this is New Testament stuff. Yeah? Okay. Therefore, come out from the midst, be separate. Who's going to come out of the midst of filthiness? God has done everything, or we also have to do something. We also need to do something. We also need to come out of filthiness. Yeah? Filthy company filthy stuff. Therefore, come out from their 
must and be separate get separated on to me my value system my way says the lord and do not touch what is unclean and i will welcome you other words you can have more intimacy with me and i'll be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to the lord almighty look when you put your faith in christ you become a son of god a daughter of god there's no doubt about that but really what's the point of this then the point of this is this you can be a son of god you can be a daughter of god and still not walk in the benefits and the blessings of sonship yes. i repeat if you have put your faith in christ you are a son of god you are a daughter of god irrespective of where you are walking right now but if you and i want to walk in the blessedness of sonship the glory of sonship the benefits of the sonship then we have to take seriously issues like holiness issues like sanctification because he's saying here do not touch anything unclean and i will welcome you i will welcome you means we'll have a great intimacy and then we are told in light of these amazing promises from god that i will welcome you and i will you'll be my son and and be separate in light of these amazing promises then we are told something which is 2 corinthians 7 one so basically let's go to 2 corinthians 7 so basically what god is saying before paul tells us in spirit of the holy spirit 2 corinthians 7 1 he's saying look if you want to walk in the privileges of sonship if you want to walk in the benefits of the sonship then take seriously the whole area of cleansing otherwise you can be a son but you're not walking in the benefits of sonship you're not walking in the blessedness of your sonship yeah um we have so many examples where uh the father has really you know uh, the son or the daughter they really upset the dad and and the rich dad what does he do he says main tumhe apni jaydad se bedakhal kar dunga so you are a son but you have no inheritance because you hurt dad's heart so much that he said okay main tumhe apni jaydad se bedakhal karta hu yeah in english now you have hurt my heart so much you are not going to get any inheritance from me so you can be a son even the kid who didn't get the inheritance will remain the son but there's no inheritance right we have rich inheritance but it doesn't fall into a lap as children of god the work of the cross has ensured that when you say yes to the lord all manner of richness and blessing are put into your heavenly account but what's in your heavenly account doesn't fall into your lap automatically we have to learn to cooperate with the holy spirit the holy spirit takes what's into your account and applies it to us more and more and more the more we walk in harmony with him yeah so that's where we come in learning to cultivate the holy spirit learning to honor the holy spirit so now look at this therefore having these amazing promises beloved l- let us cleanse ourselves of all defilement of flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god so we are told that he see the apostle is saying there are amazing promises for us as sons and daughters of god amazing if we want to possess them then this is the instruction of god therefore having this precious promise beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god therefore having this amazing promises beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all defilements of flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god it doesn't say i will do it he's saying you do it you take responsibility to come into me so that i can cleanse you so interesting therefore have this special promise beloved let us cleanse ourselves to whom is the responsibility given no no lord god will do it god will do it god will do it. everything is done in in, in in this christian faith God has done everything. God has done everything. God has done everything. You have to do nothing, brother. That's a false gospel. It's a false gospel, brother, sister. We also have to do something in light of what God has done. So, because of what Christ has done, we have these amazing promises that are ours. What should we do? Let us work together with the Holy Spirit so that He will cleanse us. Let us take responsibility for cleansing from all defilements of. flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god as i said to you in the initial years of my journey i found he would put his finger on bigger stuff because i was not ready to hear the deeper stuff so i would hear him say to me you know don't shout man 
at that person. If the person want is abusing, you don't hit him for that. You know, it's okay. But then, as the years rolled by, I'm beginning. I began to hear some other things. I didn't like your attitude in that meeting. I don't like the hard motive for what you're doing here. Suddenly, God speaks at a different level, <laughs> and we need to take that journey. There is so much boastful pride of life in in many many of us believers, and you know it comes out many different ways. John said, "What is in this world? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and boastful pride of life." Oh, sometimes the way people talk about their ministry, the way people talk about their children, the way people talk about themselves, it stinks so bad, man. But the thing is, they can't get their own stink. And then we wonder why we are not cutting edge for God with all that stink. God begins to deal with us so much in the area of attitudes. I like what our man of God already said: uh, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You aren't going forward until you change it. These attitudes are such a pain, you know. They're such a problem because you see, we can rebuke a sickness out of a person, we can rebuke a demon out of a person, but we cannot rebuke a nasty attitude out of a believer. <laughs> I, you know, I wish we could rebuke a bad attitude. It doesn't work that way. These bad attitudes are a really, issue, really big problem here. Yeah. You can't rebuke it also out of somebody. And then many times when you even tell people they beat you up, you have bad attitude. You have bad attitude. So then what do you do? Then you start praying for that person. And how precious it is when the Holy Spirit gets through to that person, and then they realize and say, "Oh Lord, really, I have this bad attitude. Help me." And that opens up an amazing door of intimacy with God. Heart motives, such a serious issue. Heart motives. We do so many things with so many crazy motives. and we still wonder why we are not cutting edge with god many of us are so much concerned by the applause of about the applause of men you know it doesn't matter if we grieve god but we must get applause of men such as issue in the body of christ yeah. how do you go forward and be more cutting edge with god when the applause of men is more important than the applause of the holy spirit the holy spirit many times really gets you into trouble when you want to honor him and then he deepens intimacy through the trouble and the craziness And the chaos. The auntie went back at night. She sent me a, a verse for my son Kabod, saying that the boy who was with me, he said, "Auntie, I feel for Kabod uh, that uh, Jeremiah one five, before I consecrated you in a mother's womb, I knew you. I appointed your prophet to the nations." Now you see, it's very exciting. Oh, my son is going to the prophet. Hey, read the whole book. Read the whole book and see what a life of a prophet is. and then i would like to ask the father how excited he is about the son being a prophet you know jeremiah went through the prophet jeremiah you want his life you know we are so excited when the prophecy comes yeah man i'm a prophet and when you start operating in the gift of prophecy and people start beating you up man because they're being 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 honest and being prophetic and then it's not so exciting at that time even jeremiah said after a lot of beating i will no longer speak in your name and then again he says You know the Lord is so sweet. The Lord comes, gets through to His people, and then one day says, "I can't help but I will speak because Your word burns in my bones." Amazing, isn't it? But God does with people. You know, we we're excited about the prophetic word, but what about the chaos and the storm that is going to come because of the prophetic word you receive? Are you ready for that? Will you will you prepare yourself for the heat and the storm that comes when the prophetic word is released over your life? When I was um, so excited about. serving god with all my time and waiting there I remember being in that meeting where this prophet was and and i was really sensing god saying to me leave your job and serve me with with all your time as a pastor and i was having a lot of questions and i was saying come on god please tell me you know where should i pastor and where should i go and 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 the lord rebuked me by saying that abraham didn't ask me so many questions he went out not knowing where he was going he said you fellow you're asking so many questions Interesting, isn't it? Oh, the rebukes of God! How sweet to the soul are the rebukes of God! How grateful I am for the rebukes of God to my soul. Not so pleasant sometimes, especially when they come from human beings. They are more painful. How we love the direct rebukes of God! But how difficult for us the rebukes that come from the servants of God. Those ones are the ones which Lord, I think He's confused. A lot you got confused, but God has so decided that many rebukes are going to come through people. That's His style. And why is it that His style? He knows how it is in our flesh. He knows how much spiritual formation happens when the rebukes come from human agency. But we are like, Lord, please rebuke me, but only you. You aren't growing in God, buddy. The rebukes of God will often come through people. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so excited about 
but god has called me first i get the rebuke from god and i'm like okay i'm sorry i won't ask any more question and then i'm this meeting and this as i said this guy this kerala fellow he he speak in malayalam i'm not understanding anything and i'm saying okay lord this fellow and me we don't know each other he knows only malayalam i know only english great if you want me to leave my job and serve you all my time let this man speak and look at the mercy of god god even cares for you know such crazy requests and so suddenly i just finished and this fellow calls me in malayalam come here and i'm like someone translate man please and i loved what the, what was spoken it was more than what i was wanting to hear <laughs> remember how god has stood with you was the word remember how god has stood with you over the years lift up the banner of the lord there is a lot of glory at hand oh we love such words remember the banner of the lord so much glory at hand oh but i had no idea of the price i will have to pay for that glory at hand i had no idea about that but the word sounded so good so excited me i went up and called my spiritual father i said you know the word i was waiting for came and he put a pen in my balloon praise god for servants of god who put a pen in a balloon and make us sober so i i tell him i say you know the guy said more than i wanted to hear <laughs> what this guy said for me was much more than i would have loved to hear i would have been happy with just take leave your job and serve god i would have been just happy with that but when he said lift up the banner of the lord there's a lot of glory at hand that is much more than i had expected but i didn't but i had no idea of the price you pay when god wants you to show some glory to you and through you and so i call up this man and i'm like my special father and i'm like oh so excited so excited finally after reading so many years i hear these amazing prophetic words and he says to me i'm so happy to hear this son but please get out of the way and let god bring to pass this amazing prophetic word in his way and his time you know we need reminding that we need to be sober about the processes of god when amazing stuff is spoken over our life so he said good now you you have to get out of the way so that god can bring to pass in his own way in in his own time this word of life i was so excited as if i am going to do this tomorrow that helped me so much we need to prepare for amazing prophetic words to be accomplished over our life there's a preparation there's a process that we need to engage with god And so after all that happened yesterday I was so excited to hear such amazing stuff for so many of you I feel compelled in my love for you by the Holy Spirit to say some stuff to you that can help you to actually walk in the fullness of what was spoken over your life yesterday So uh please write down what was spoken if you are a person who can draw draw if you are a person who 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 likes to make pictures of what is spoken draw I have seen people God has spoken amazing word over them and they have drawn it it's amazing they have so seen it in the spirit they draw pictures of what they understand what god spoke and then please spend time visiting that picture that what you written down treasure and ponder on the prophetic word because the devil is going to going to raise a ball hell against you and that word because he wants to convince you you are not that person it's not happening for you it's not happening for you man it it will happen for them but not for you and the devil will give you so many reasons why it won't happen for you look at joseph he has these amazing dreams and then what happens for many many years everything that is happening is against totally opposite total contradiction to the dream it's like it's like you know joseph could have even been tempted to question did i see the dream was it i was was a hallucinating Or was it really a dream? Look at David. The great Samuel anoints you to be king, and for some time things are going great. Things are going exactly as per the expectation Samuel set in David's heart. He kills Goliath, becomes the blood boy of the king. He's the general of the army, and then what happens? He becomes more popular than the king, and women are singing. Saul killed thousand, and David killed ten thousand. in your office when people appreciate more, more more you more than your boss then what happens 
you are in trouble after some time. Suddenly, you are no longer the blue eyed boy after all. They think, Arre, he will take my place now. So let's kick him out before that happens. Yeah. And Saul says this What else now? He will take my kingdom like this. He's so popular, he'll take my kingdom. He's, he's thinking to himself. The Bible tells us that Saul is thinking to himself, Now this fellow take my kingdom away from me. So he wants to kill him. Imagine an amazing prophet, the most amazing prophet of your times, comes and anoints you to be king. And you're spending so many years, not even sure whether, whether I will still see tomorrow. He's running, hiding from pillars, caves, dens, not even sure whether he'll see tomorrow. You know, imagine, it's like saying, David, you'll be king here. Yeah? Are, are, I hope I survive till tomorrow, man. You know, that's the situation. And David gives us insight into what kept him in that difficult time. He says, I would have got depressed if I would not have believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Yeah? He acknowledges that, man, I went through a really, really crazy time, a very difficult time, when this man, the king at the time, was, was hungry after my blood. I went through a very difficult time. But he says, you know, I didn't get depressed. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I believed that because of this good God, I will see goodness of God one day again. Mm -hmm. Precious ones, uh, the devil is going to raise up opposition in your life in line with the word of prophecy spoken over you. To discourage you, to convince you, it's not going to work out for you. And my encouragement to you is, and even auntie reminded of that was. Fight the good fight of faith using these promises and these prophetic words. Yeah. Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight. Yeah, 1 Timothy 1.18. And let's close with that. 1 Timothy 1.18. Why did Paul have to tell Timothy that in your warfare, the prophecies made over you are important? Use them to fight. Okay, this command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight. And this is my encouragement to all of you, O oh, precious people of God, in accordance with the prophecies made concerning you in the past, including yesterday, take them to heart so that by them you may fight a good fight. Because war is coming. The ones who were celebrating the most yesterday, I say to you, a new intense war is coming for you. So get ready. And shine for God. Use these prophecies to fight. He said, no, 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 my God said this. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. The psalmist says in one place, Lord, you have made me trust in your promises. Hallelujah. You have made me put my trust in your promises. God is a faithful promiser. If God said something, he's going to put all his weight behind you. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a very sincere God we have. This is a very sincere God we have. But precious ones, let's get ready for war. Prophetic declarations are invitations to go deeper in God. They are also invitations for greater warfare. It is through the warfare we see deeper revelations of God. It is through the warfare we learn to victor more. And we then can help many others to victor where we are. Yeah? So let's get ready for more war. And as I close, the encouragement to you I would also say is, you know, we serve this amazing, 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 amazing God. When we were coming today, my father was, was telling me, you know, that brother, with all his challenges, came yesterday for the meeting. Yeah. I couldn't help but say to my father, amazing drawing power of God on the lives of the God. If you and I are where we are today, it has so much to do with the commitment of this God in our life. The drawing power of this God. Constantly getting through to lift us up. Sending all manner of help to lift us. His refusal to give up on us. Oh, I've never seen someone like this. I've no, never known someone like this. So persevering in love. So determined to lift us up. So determined to take us forward in our prophetic destiny. It amazes me the person that God is. God cares immensely for us. You know, even if he has to send someone from seven, across seven seas to encourage you, he will do it. Yes. And if he, if he has to take you from here across the seven seas, he will do it. Immensely cares for us. Even if it was to send a preacher for just you in a, in, a, in a church service, we will do it. We have no idea how persevering this God is, how loving this God is, how caring this God is. Or oh, there is amazing, amazing commitment God has towards the call. And that's my encouragement to you. Even as you 
work together with the Holy Spirit and learn to grow in spiritual spiritual gifts and you learn to grow in character development through communion with Him. Be at rest. This God's full backing is with you. He's mightily on your side. Extremely committed to see that you make it. He delights in us shining forth for Him. We are sons and daughters. He so delights Him. It delights Him when we go forward, when we go forward in our journey. And I have never known someone so patient and so gracious. I have never known someone so gracious and so patient. You know, we have this thing, long rope. God's long rope is so long, it has no end to it. That's how long it is for the called, for the chosen. Hallelujah. The ones whom he has foreknown, he has predestined. To be confirmed to the image of his son. The ones he has predestined, he has also called. The ones he has called is also justified. And the ones he has justified is also glorified. God has taken it upon himself. That I will take glory from this life. I will take glory from that life. I will take glory from this life. Hallelujah. Oh, the mercies of God. How great and amazing are the mercies of God.